Hey everybody, welcome to my video on first degree price discrimination. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about a monopoly characterized by these equations here on the left. We got an inverse demand curve, price equals 100 minus Q, and we got a total cost function and a marginal cost function from it. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to briefly remind you what happens if it's a single price monopoly or if it's a second degree price discriminator. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how profit increases again if we make it a first degree price discriminator. So for a single price monopoly, we, in my last video on second degree price discrimination, we solved for this picture basically with consumer surplus highlighted there. And what we found was that there was a profit of $2,222.22 approximately. And then in my video, we solve for second degree price discrimination under a very specific pricing scheme it looked like this with consumer surplus shaded in green and we found that the firm's profit was 2900 notice as we were able to discriminate prices profit went up now in this video we're going to talk about first degree price discrimination so let me get a picture up here what's the difference between first and second degree price discrimination in second degree we set up brackets. For a certain quantity range, we charge a certain price. For a certain quantity range, we charge a certain price. In first degree price discrimination, you could think of it the same way, only it's for every single quantity, we charge a specific price. It's like second degree price discrimination, but with infinite brackets. If we have a consumer here willing to pay $99, they will pay $99. If we have a consumer here willing to pay $97, they will pay $97. Every single quantity will be linked to its maximum willingness to pay. Uh, by doing that, our price ends up mirror being exactly on top of the demand curve, where that's our price function. Now, a couple of things happen here. One. If consumer surplus is the gap between demand and price, that means that in this situation, there is no consumer surplus because the demand curve is the price curve. So there's no consumer surplus at all. Uh, but there are some things we like about it. For one thing, every, benef every mutually beneficial transaction will occur. Every time the consumer's willingness to pay on that red line is greater than the marginal cost, the firm will sell it. Unlike with our single price monopoly, and in some time, maybe not in this example, but in many other examples of second degree price discrimination, we can have inefficiency. In this one, wow, we like it. It's perfectly efficient. It might not be fair. That's a different issue. So how do we know what quantity will be produced in this market? Well, every time the price is greater than the marginal cost, the firm is willing to sell. So they will sell up until the point that marginal cost exceeds price. Uh, now I should point out, since there's no consumer surplus, all of this stuff in here will all be producer surplus, all of it. The producer captures everything by extracting it all from the consumer. But anyway, what's this gonna look like? We had a price curve of P equals 100 minus Q, and we're gonna set that equal to the marginal cost curve, which was 1 fourth Q. So let's see, that's 100 equals 5 fourths Q, which means Q equals 80. 80 units will get sold. Now, what price will they be sold at? Every price between 100 and 20. 20 will be the lowest price that it gets sold by. How do we know? P equals 100 minus 80 equals 20. The 80th unit will sell for $20 but everything else will be at different prices all the way up the demand curve. 
uh, let's see, so how much profit, or yeah, how much profit does our firm have? Well, we didn't have a fixed cost, so profit's the same thing as consumer, as producer surplus. Uh, so really, all I have to do to solve for profit is find the area of this big old triangle. Which is kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, our producer surplus here how much is it? Well, it is one half times 80 is the base times that thing is a hundred dollars high. Which is going to come out to be 4,000. Now I mentioned this is the same thing as profit. Why is this the same thing as profit? Profit equals producer surplus if and only if your fixed costs are equal to zero. If you don't have fixed costs, profit is is producer surplus, and there are no fixed costs in that equation. So, anyway, I don't really have much else to say about this. It's a simple mathematical case, hard to see in real life, and if you do see it in real life, you better hope you're the firm and not the consumer, uh, but the market's efficient either way. Uh, that's first degree price discrimination discrimination in a nutshell. I hope it was helpful for you guys. If not, too bad. Good luck and happy econing.